story. If you sit down, I'll tell you a very, very beautiful story. An awesome story. Hallelujah! It's getting at three! Hallelujah! Blessed be God! Amen! God is an awesome God! Thank you very much! Thank you! Thank you. Thank you. Well, on Sunday last week, the 24th of February, it was the anniversary of AMI. We had turned 17 years old. Glory to Jesus. Now, 17 years is a long time. A child that is born and after 17 years, such a child has gotten to a certain degree and level of maturity and uh, begins to claim a certain dimension of... Oh, yes! All right, allow, allow me to speak. Media, allow me to speak. All right. You see, you don't provoke AMI. You, you, don't, you don't provoke AMI. You don't. You, you, don't, you, you don't play with AMI. Wow. You don't play with AMI. We always win. We always win. Never defeated. Never defeated. We are AMI. We are AMI. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Everybody stand up. We're not going to do something. Everybody. Don't, don't shout. Just stand up. Something good. Stand up, everybody. Are you all standing? Okay. Close your eyes. Everybody, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. One, two, three. Go. Out. Another one. Back. Last one. Down. You can be seated now. Glory to you. In and out, in and out, so you may be seated. Well, please have a seat. I have 30 minutes to go, and I want to see if I can squeeze the word and pray with you too. Amen. What, what happened is very serious, so I just want to give you a glimpse of of it from my stand so we may all be in the same mind. Are we together? Yeah. During the service, as you know, we have been interrupted twice. How many of you remember? Yeah. Be because of uh, power. The generator uh, uh, overheated and so forth. So we had a longer service than usual. Our service uh, that's supposed to normally finish at uh, 12 o'clock went to 1 and went to 2 and so forth. Um, then we had news that uh, somebody who was in the coffin was moving. The family brought him on the way to burial or something like that. And as we heard it, I went out to see. And uh, as uh, seen in the camera, the person in the coffin was indeed breathing. So I say, miraculously... The person is alive, is breathing, but uh, he was uh, breathing, looking, his body was very stiff, he was in a catatonic state, he was uh, looking left and right, I, I asked his name, they gave me a long name and uh, Elliot, so I say Elliot, I call Elliot, he was not moving, I tried to pull his head, he would look at me. Then I prayed for him that God may give him the grace uh, that he may be strong. And he stood out of the coffin. We pulled him out of the coffin. Now, all this happening is not strange, not only to our church, but also not 
strange to the word of God. Are you together? Why not strange to the church of God in Alleluia Ministries? Why? Because we have many people that come with different testimonies and those testimonies are proclaimed. We do this weekly, consistently. Yes. When somebody comes and says that um, I had pain in my womb and now the pain is gone, we celebrate that. We don't, we don't find out what they, whatever. The person say, I was bleeding, I'm not bleeding anymore. We celebrate God for the person and I come to seal it by laying hands on the person. So it's consistent with the, what the church does. With people of faith, we have no reason whatsoever in situation where such an event happens that uh, we may be uh, uh, doubting or skeptical. So we celebrated that miracle. The person could walk. We brought him here. He was still looking around and so forth. So as far as the church is concerned, it was beautiful. And according to the word of God, family, our world today has grown so cold that is a shame. That's right. The church of God has gone so empty and cold. That is a shame. And I tell this as an apostle today. And hear me. It is the teaching of the word that uh, the dead can come back to life. That's right. Well, while this may be extremely unlikely to the world and extremely strange to the world, but it's supposed not to be strange to the church. At all. The Bible says a carnal man cannot understand the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. A kind of man here is somebody who is not in the spirit of God. He may be a lawyer, a professor, a journalist, a politician. The Bible says a kind of man is a simple person. A person who is not in your faith. Who does not follow Christ like you. He does not understand the things of the spirit. So I say again, it is consistent with the scriptures that, that those who die physically may come back to life. Are you hearing me? The Bible shows that, that Jesus Christ himself was an instrument of resurrection. He went to the house of Jairus and uh, looked at the 12 year old daughter who died. Jairus' daughter, that is. And he spoke unto this child who died. She was not sick, she had died. And said, Talita Kumi, meaning. Young girl, come back. And the Bible says, the little girl came back to life. She was not strong to jump, but she came back to life. And Jesus Christ said, please give her food that she may eat. Because though she came back to life, her immune system was weak. Right. Are you understanding this? And I just wish that uh, right now, pastors and ministers may be watching and understand. Right. Now, not only that uh, Jairus' daughter came back to life, the Bible says one day Jesus Christ saw a woman, a widow woman who had only one son. The son was dead and in the coffin. They were on the way to Zimbabwe. No, no, to be buried. Yay! Hey. We, 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 I, 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 want, I believe that many in the body, of, many clergymen still need to go back to the whiteboard. This young child, the only son to the mother, died and was in the coffin on the way to be buried. And Jesus Christ came and touched the coffin and spoke to the young child or the child who died, the son, and said, rise up. And he stood up straight and took him and gave him back to the mother. So you see, not only that Jesus Christ resurrected Jairus' daughter, 
he also resurrected this young boy but you know in the book of John chapter 11 he was called to come and assist a man he knew he loved his name was Lazarus but after four days he decided to go because previously he said he's sleeping he didn't want to go he wanted a normal situation to become worse so he may show the glory and the power now I, 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 I'm trying my best to at least teach those who are willing to hear that this first is consistent with the scripture so this man died for four days any medical practitioner will tell you that uh, after four days the person is gone there is nothing to take you can't use his liver you can't use his intestine there is nothing that uh, you can reuse he was wasted but he stood there and said remove the stone they argue that that is smelling he said i am the resurrection and life oh yes and as they removed the stone he prayed and this is what he said father i know you always hear me and he said if i prayed is that they may know yes. that you sent me hallelujah listen to me it doesn't matter who's saying what out there it doesn't matter who's doubting out there right now the world is about to know that God has anointed a man in this generation and his name is Af Lukau yes! hallelujah yes yes please have a seat I have a seat Jesus say in his prayer study his prayer he said father I thank you I know you always hear me and if I pray is that they may know that you sent me and the Bible said with a loud voice he said Lazarus come forth and Lazarus who was dead for four days rotten and wasted came back not like the daughter of Jairus who needed to be uh, uh, given food to regain her strength Lazarus was jumping leaping out and Jesus say untie him and let him go now you see resurrection of the dead physically is the will of God it is consistent with the scriptures now not only that it was seen in the ministry of Jesus Christ but even after him the Bible say Peter was called because there was a lady called Tabitha Dorcas who worked with her hand but fell sick and died. But the people around Tabitha had refused to bury her. They said we will call for a man of God to come and pray resurrection. Peter was invited, got there, and he asked, the woman began to show Peter all the works of Tabitha. And Peter prayed over Tabitha, come back to life. And Tabitha came back to life. Now listen to me. If it was in our time now, bishops would distance themselves from Peter. Right, right. Correct. Can I ask, ask you, do we still believe the Bible? Do we still believe what is written in the scriptures? Hey. Please have a seat. Tabitha Dorcas stood and began to work and walk. But he didn't stop there. The Bible said, Paul was preaching one night and he spoke long that a young boy seated by the window fell asleep and fell down to his death they all rushed down to check and the boy was gone paul anointed by the holy ghost operating with the power of the holy ghost 
came down and brought him back to life and went back. Now I tell you, if it was in our time now, the hawks will investigate him. There will be charges against him. Yes. Are you hearing me? The church will doubt him because we have literally turned our back to God. We profess good, we live wrong. Oh, Jesus. We preach loud, we believe not. Mm. Mm. Our claim seems to be right, but our heart is dark. Who will stand for God in this generation? Oh, Who will arise in boldness and say, no matter what happens, I will stand to proclaim God. Yes. Our generation needs crazy people. Yes. Now have a seat. This is consistent with the scriptures. It is not, it may not be politically correct. It may not be acceptable to our rational mind today, but it is consistent with the scriptures. Now going back to what happened when I heard that there was a miracle, we preach faith. We tell you nothing is impossible to God. That's right. He said, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? It is a shame for any servant of God to distance himself from a miracle. Angels are looking down and shaking their head. That's right. We're afraid of persecution. We want to be applauded by everybody. We want people to give us accolade. We want people to say you are good. That one is bad. Listen to me. I'd rather be approved by God Hallelujah. than by man. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you with me? Yeah, God is okay. raising up a crazy generation. Yes. Who am I talking to? Crazy men, crazy women who will give God no limit. Who will allow yes. God to be God and do what only God can yes. do. Amen. Please have a seat. The world today through technology is trying to do things that are even the church cannot dare think of. They have moved from a, just a heart transplant. Now they are working on a head transplant. You know that? Yes. Are you aware of it? For them, it's not witchcraft. For them, it's logical. That they will take a head of somebody and give it a body. Now, if you believe that God can only heal headaches, Christianity as we know it will become so irrelevant, so irrelevant, that our children will not know our God. The children of our children will literally turn their back on our God. We need fire in this generation. Yes! Who am I talking to? Fire. We need fire. Fire. Hallelujah. Now, I believe in miracles. I'm not shy to say that. Yes. I believe God can do literally anything. My believing in miracle is not a scheme to influence or manipulate anybody. It is my faith. And when I share it, I share something from within me. 
I believe our God is above every other. Amen. He is the Alpha and Omega. He yes. says one word and it comes to pass. Amen. I believe. We believe with you. I believe if God will tell me now bring a body from the general hospital downtown's mortuary and put him on the stage and pray for him. Yes, 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 yes. We believe. Yes. Hear me. Be it that some will applaud me some will say it's bizarre it's okay i'll do it are you hearing me Amen. now please understand i'm not saying this to get you excited i am speaking from really honestly what i believe are you hearing me yes pastor when we pray for the sick, we don't pray for the sick because we feel like praying. Mm -mm. It's because we believe. Yes. Please have a seat. But having said that, what happened on Sunday was not a resurrection miracle done by Pastor Alf. I say this because I do not want to temper into God's glory. I don't want to claim credit for what only God did. I had no hand on what happened. We were all here. If I had a hand on it, that coffin came late. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Hmm. Now, as we went there, I saw the person is breathing. Now, any small pastor, simple in every way whatsoever, would have still done that. Now, if you are not the entry-level pastor and you would have run, you are not to stand before God's people. Right. You... you what was done on Sunday was the simplest thing anyone could have done. Oh, yes. Somebody's in the coffin. He's alive. Really? Let go. Open it. Wow. He's alive. He's breathing. Pray for him. Pull him out. Where is the scandal in that? Where? Just tell me where. Come on. Where? Yeah. God anointed me for difficult matters. Yes. But hear this. He also anointed me to rectify things in the body of Christ. Yes. What makes you is not a position. Yes. What makes me is not a position. Either we know this God or we don't. Simple. If a scandal is in this entry level, mm. you, my friend, you are lost. Hey. Please have a seat. Now, as we celebrated God, family, people around the world celebrated God yeah. and are still celebrating yeah. God. They did not look at what happened as Aflo Kau. They oh, look at it as Jesus Christ himself. Yes. That's right. They understood that the between being skeptical and believing later, meaning the Thomas Road, then being bitter and jumping in the water, it's better. 
to jump in the water. People around the world began to glorify God. But the challenge came with a group of those from different walks, some ministers, some pastors, some believers, some normal members of the society, who in the shock of what had happened, began to wonder. And in wondering, most of them went to one conclusion. It can't be. This is staged. I don't blame those who do not know God. Because that is natural. But those who call on God. Hey. Hear me. If your pastor does not believe in the resurrection of the dead, you are in the wrong club altogether. Together. Hear this. It is written, now unto he who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask and hope for through the power yes. that worketh within us. Hallelujah. To him be the glory. Mm. Have a seat, family. I am speaking to you, AMI. This message is not intended to hurt, frustrate anybody out there. It is my responsibility as a guardian of this altar to pour my heart to you that you may know my color inside. Oh, yes. You may know what I stand for. Whether somebody will uh, say amen to it outside or not, I don't care. Now have a seat. Hear this. You see, faith is all about conviction. Yes. If you stand for nothing, you fall for everything. True. Very true. So they begin to wonder, how can it be? This cannot be. This might be a stage thing. Now, they are, they got to a conclusion. This one is fake. And they went on saying, Pastor Alf has orchestrated it. Pastor Alf has put it together. Now, if you read the scriptures, you begin to see that that struggle did not start now. In the book of John chapter 9, Jesus Christ opened the eyes of a blind man. This man was born blind. He had never seen the sun in his life. As the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the greatest problem of the body of Christ, the Pharisees and the Sadducees saw that he was born blind. They went to investigate him. To understand, were you really born blind? And that this is the process they had taken. The first Call for the parent. Meaning they went to the roots. They say, is this your son? To the father and the mother. They say, yes, this is our son. Is it that he was born blind? The parent answered, yes, he was born blind. And they look and say, so how then can he see? <laughs> the father and the mother answered, the Pharisees. You must answer the Pharisees. Yes, you must. The father and the mother answer the Pharisees and say, this is indeed our son and we confirm he was born blind. But to how he can see, ask him himself. He's of age. He will answer you. You see, 
they went through a little investigation. So they went to the little, the gentleman who was 40 now, they went to him and inquired, tell us, were you really born blind? Did Jesus Christ orchestrated this? Did he pay you some money? Because you see, miracles are difficult to understand. That's why we call it a miracle. That's right. It goes beyond any form of rationality. Were you born blind? Say, yes. You see, how then can you see? He tells them, Jesus Christ did this, and I opened my eyes. Mm. Now, because any time the devil wants you to abort your miracle, he discredits the source. That's right. He tells you, Pastor Alf is a corn man. You have been with Pastor Alf for all this time. The person out there does not know a thing of him. He tells you this man is not who he says he is. Because you see, the devil understands if I can discredit the source, I will stop you from drinking from it. That's right. So they say to this man, give God glory. We know this man is a sinner. They know. Mm. The Pharisees, we know this guy is a sinner. He looked at them. Up, down. Down, up. And he said, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. Oh. One thing I know. Yay. I was blind. But and now I, I can, can see. To Jesus. We are screaming and shouting not because we have left our brain at home. No, at home. we are screaming because we know what this man is saying. I was blind, but now I can see. It is really funny that whoever is claiming that pastors are manipulating you, they are not in the church. They, they are in the Shebins, they go to slaughter with the ritualist, the witch doctor. Yes. They go drink and they have their lives. For them to catch a bit of sleep, they need to take depression pills. But yet, they seem to know what's wrong here. While well, they are out there, shame. Shame. It's shame. Please have a seat. Are you with me? We are, Pastor. And again, I'm saying this I share with you from my heart. Whatever I'm sharing is not intended to hurt anybody out there. It is my sincere responsibility in the house of God to stand and address you with honesty of my heart. Right. We appreciate Pastor. How do you know, my question is, that it is a fake miracle? so soon, so fast. How? Right there, the same Sunday, few minutes later, it is fake. It is not true. And pastors children of God, instead of coming together to give God glory, we take side and position. Shame. Shame. Now here, there are close to five things that brought people, according to my understanding, to that place where they say it's fake. 
The first thing is some people, no matter what, before the miracle happened, after it had happened, they don't believe in miracles. Yes. There are people in the world who do not believe in miracles. And there are people in the world who still believe in miracles. That's where they go to see all those nyangas and sangomas to make things happen to them. And the same in the church. There are people in the church who believe in miracles. And there are people, a little group of people, who have lost it along the way. They read the miracle power of God, but yet they don't believe it. Right. They proclaim it, but still they don't believe it. That's right. There are people who saw this because already by disposition of heart, the supernatural is not their thing. They do not believe it. It doesn't matter if it was resurrection or it was a wheelchair or it was a eyes opened. They just don't believe in miracles. For them, they went to one side. Someone asked on social media and said, but what if, and he was stopped, what if what? This is fake. Meaning, your mind is conditioned that such things can never be of God. Miracles do not happen. Now, when you have a club of people like that, it doesn't matter what the preacher does or does not do. Is right. already wrong. Now, the second group, I presume, who have uh, concluded immediately that this could be fake, is people who do not trust the integrity of those who are called by God. There are many people out there, when they look at pastors, servants of God, they are under the impression that these guys are here to manipulate people to try to dry their pocket and feed themselves. And that this is a stronghold in the mind of many. If you're a pastor, you are broke and broken, you are excused. But if you have shining shoes, they want to know who did you rob to buy that shining shoe. True. Men of God around the world have been persecuted simply because of this. There are places that if you introduce yourself, I'm a pastor, I'm a prophet, already they put you in a certain line, in a certain box. For them, they believe everyone is a thief, a manipulator, is after something. And worse, if you look, you have a certain look. And you come from a certain corner. They judge you based of where you come from. How you look. Let me tell you, this is diabolical. True, very. Mm. It is sincerely unfair conclusion. And it is not godly. Now, if somebody who believes that are those who serve God, Pastor Alf, and uh, the many others, all that we are after is to get as much as possible from the poor. Thank God there are no poor people in Alleluia Ministries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory! We are all rich in God. No, not. No, Thank we God. Are not. Yes. Yes. It is written. Let the poor say, I am rich. Glory to Jesus. I have a seat. Now, this category of people who think that uh, Pastor Arf and the rest, please do not paint everybody with the same brush. True. It is unfair to do so to politicians. You may have known a bad politician. Please make room for a good one. Yes. It is unfair to do so 
uh, on business people, on a uh, husband, on wives, on children. The girls of Johannesburg, they are all like that. Not all the girls of Johannesburg are like the one who dumped you. Yeah. Are you listening to me? So those people concluded probably that wow, Pastor Alf has orchestrated this miracle because out of this guy that comes out of the coffin, he will get in his pocket some dollars. And because of that, I say, it is fake. Then the third is people who probably, I'm thinking, have analyzed the fact already being on the boundary because I heard people saying that, uh, no way, this person was not dead. The person had a cell phone because he had to communicate with Pastor Alf while in the coffin. Hey. He, had, he had a cell phone. And in the intelligence, they even pointed it out. As if you have a cell phone in your pocket, it will show. And they say, while he was like this, he was on WhatsApp with Pastor Al. My God, help us. Hear this. The level of intelligence of somebody, some people out there, is very high. Extremely high. To be able to think that somebody in a tight coffin will be using a cell phone to communicate with a pastor on the stage. Amen. You see how wise the world is. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who don't fear God have none of that. Yes. But the fourth category of people that uh, maybe go to the conclusion that mm -mm, this is fake are people who saw the mortuary car with the name and the number and quickly after that called the mortuary to find out did you send a body to Hallelujah Ministries? And the mortuary say, hey, no, we did not. They said, do you know of a certain body, a corpse that came out from your mortuary since Friday? And the mortuary say, no, we distance ourselves from it. And that those ones say, yo, we got Pastor Alf. He lied. No, he lied. We got him. I'm telling you, we have him. The devil is a liar. Now, hear this. I say again, and I say it before you, standing where I minister to you for all these years, that was my first time to see all those people. The family, the one in the coffin, and the car. Are you hearing me? The mortuary said, we do not know this, we distance ourselves. And there have been a lot of say. The first, they say, that vehicle is not ours. It's the church vehicle branded as ours. Now, anybody who hears that says that, yo, this pastor, ha, is very deep. Later on, we heard that the mortuary say, oh, it is our vehicle. But these people paid to just transport the body to the church. That's now a version, the current version. And the mortuary, very fast, extremely fast, released a press statement 
and lay charges against me and against the church. Now, let me tell you, big mistake. Yeah. We are AMI. We are AMI. Never intimidated. Always motivated. Please have a seat. Now, hear me. I say again, I don't know these people. It's my first time before God to see these people. I don't know that funeral parlor. Never heard of them before. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying the procedure taken so fast. Press release, charges, it is the vehicle of the church, and later on, it is our vehicle, whatever the case may be. Now, between the church and you who brought the body, who has to answer? Amen, really? Where did you get this body? Was the body alive or dead when you brought it? Here. But because society is knitted together against the church, yes. nobody's even thinking about it. Here. This, we need to understand, not that we're going to put up a, fast, a fight, but we need to understand. What are the procedures for a mortuary to pick a body and to move it from one point to another? Uh-huh. Are there policies and regulations that need to be followed? If you take a body, don't you verify if the person is really dead? Because you must know, if you just take a coffin like that, you may take drugs one day. Right. So there must, I presume, some level of inspection. So I don't have those answers, but I think they may have it. So we will ask for a meeting to hear. It is not a way out to say it is the church. Mm -mm. That will not work. I say to you this. Lies in general, mm. I'm talking about this matter, lies in general may take the lift. The truth takes the steps. That is very good thing. Please have a seat. I am in no way whatsoever blaming the mortuary. I am saying here, we will understand this. Are you hearing me? Amen. To my surprise, not only one mortuary, not two, three. Where are the two others coming from? Hey. May God punish the devil. Jesus, man. Please have a seat. Yesterday, there's supposed to be a gathering in front of our door, our gate. And supposedly, a brother, a fellow, had called the South African Funeral Association. 
and invited all the press of the country from Cape Town to Limpopo to Polokwane, Pasi, Pumalanga. All the press, he said, all of you, please come because we need to fix certain matters. But it is with great joy that I heard that the South African Funeral Association via its own chairman, Mr. Tabo Banda, called and said, we distance ourselves from that practice. They say, there might be an issue here. We need to get that together with the church and understand it. But whatever has been initiated, the fellow who brought it runs a parlor himself. For it was not church, it was business because he runs his own parlor. And they say, that fellow has his parlor. This battle is not our battle. Mr. Tabobanda, the chairman, disassociated and said, We distance ourselves from it. That's why they didn't come. Wisdom. Because you cannot take an entire association for granted. I believe there are processes and there are great minds that think in association. And I was also blessed when I opened the news, uh, online news, and I read the answer from what is known as COSA, the Christian of South Africa Association, COSA. His president, Derek Musoana. Musoana? Muswana is a pastor, Pastor Derek Muswana. I was really blessed by his thought process, not because he spoke of us, but because he referred matters on the principles of the scriptures and say, we deal with matters in this manner. He is wiser than the so-called fathers. He said he was shocked by the jealousy of a populist who with desperation attempted to remain relevant. I stop there. I just want to say, I thank God for that. Matters need to be dealt with. But there is a proper way to deal with matters. Are we together? Please have a seat. The fifth thing that I may have also affirm those who believe that it was staged, it was fake, with no evidence. No one right now has any slice evidence that this was made by Pastor Av. But yet, through the media, it was affirmed. Now, I gotta say, we have great media houses in the country. We have media houses that uphold great level of ethics and we are proud of those but we also have media houses or journalists that sometimes in the pressure of having a story they create it themselves media Journalists are supposed to report news, not to make news. Now, we have mo some media houses that uh, had fallen short of interrogating the event 
that had happened on the 24th objectively. They were taken by all the say here, say there, social media, and so forth. And they brought it together, undermining or not paying attention that the power they carry to many minds out there is literally an establishment of truth. If it was in the news, some people think God has spoken. And family, that is a lot of power. There are people who run with an evidence simply because, no, I, I saw it in the news. Now, because of that, our media houses, uh, we all need to be very careful. Now, again, I say here, I'm not speaking of all the media houses. I'm talking about the few who had fallen in the trap of, uh, there is a story, let's run with it. A number of things that has been said in the media that were really shocking. First, almost every headline, almost, said Pastor Arf claimed to have resurrected a man who was dead. Now, I am asking whoever wrote it, tell me, where did I claim it? If you believe that I claim it, fine. Show me a video, a test. Tell me where did you get that? If you cannot tell me that, please, for dignity's sake, retract it. Yes. 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 Right. This is a simple call for dignity. Because you see, with this, so many people took it as a truth, Bible truth. Pastor Arf claims, and the picture in people's mind is now that Pastor Arf called for a body and he presented it there and said to the world, see how powerful I am. I'm about to perform a miracle to seduce you all to me. Rise! Now, this is the picture we have created. God anointed me. I don't need to play tricks. That's right. Say it again. Yes. Before that car came, we had so many healings taking place already. Yes. Now again, I say, most of the media houses wrote it there not thinking that they're writing a story of a person and with all the things that goes around him. Not just a subject. They say, Pastor Arf claims he resurrected a man from the dead. Yet if they just took five, ten minutes to go through the video, not, not in interrogating people. Just go through the video. It is there. And the sound is there. You will see Pastor Arf coming and say, he's breathing. You will hear Pastor Arf being called and say, there is somebody out there who is alive. In the bracket, please understand. Many people sometimes bring dead people during the week. My child is dead. Come to church. What do we do? We cancel them. Because to lose a loved one is difficult. And to part with him, especially if he's a sudden death, it is very, very difficult. Sometimes it takes a process. We don't bring those people on a Sunday morning and lay them on the altar and say, let them stretch the power of God. This one, if he was not breathing, if he was not dead, probably they would have not called me. The reason why they called me was not to come and resurrect somebody. It was to come and see what was happening. Are you hearing me? Amen. I've realized that not only that we had the media becoming very creative and flowing the spirit and keeping things 
<laughs> I realized that right now, family, right now, anything about Amai Afluka goes on the media. I was, I, I, I stepped on an article yesterday on, um, I think, eyewitness or something like that, of a young boy, a young man, I think his name should be Anthony, Antonio, something like that, that used to be here for a year, many years ago, for a year. And he was part of the protocol. But uh, he presented himself as a co-founder, co-founder of Hallelujah Ministries. The devil is a liar. And you see, it gives him authority. But because the media want to hear and write, they quickly put there an ex-member of Hallelujah Ministries, a co-founder, co-founder. Yes. Hear me? I founded Hallelujah Ministries alone. Yes. Loud and clear. Hallelujah Ministries never, in no way, no time, had a co-founder. I had assistant pastors, deputy pastors. I never had a co-founder. I founded Hallelujah Ministries when God spoke to me. Amen. He didn't speak to two people. No. He spoke to one person. But you see, I'm giving this as an example. It was written there, co-founder. Why? Because whatever the person will say inside, as a former co-founder, it gives him authority. Now, if I question that media house, where did you get it? They will say, he said. Is it responsible to write things that the world will see based mm -hmm. on he said? If somebody today comes and says, Pastor Af took one million dollars that was mine. It will go immediately. Tomorrow, it's there. No verification. The one, a person uh, uh, robbed one million dollars by Pastor Aflukau is coming out. That is really unfair. And because of the power the media has, it can hurt very bad. That's why we all have to have a media that is uh, responsible. Are you hearing me? Yes. Media is supposed to be our friends, not our enemies. Yes. But we have the impression that the media, even when they call you, come, we're giving you a chance to, to, to respond. We know that no, you're trying to turn things around. When we have good stories here, where are you, media? Oh, yes, good question. Sometimes we beg the media to come. We send them letters. They don't come. But now, they want to stand at our doors. They want to enter in our properties. Thank God it's a private property. We are AMI. My son, Anneli, please come. This... This son serves God here. Yes. He's both a minister of the word of God and he operates cameras. He grew up with God in this house. Yes. He was very young when he started here. His father is one of the executive bishops we have in this ministry. Glory to Jesus. Family, I say this because it is important that I may take you through this. Are we together? Yes, yes. Annele, because of social media, people who see cell phone in the coffin and so forth, our media, instead of verifying information, they say because we want Pastor Af to be wrong. We need to find him wrong. So he staged this how? Mm -mm. This man in the coffin is this guy. The devil is the liar.
Now, hear this. This is how low we can be. Now, this is a young man. He's coming from Pretoria, coming to work. He gets to the station. Some people look at him. They say, it is you. They attack him. Because, but now, this is an evidence. They're looking for evidence. This one, the mortuary car was an evidence. And this is the second evidence that it was staged. So they say, you are playing dead. If you see over 3,000 comments on social media, insulting and cursing him, now you will die forever. Do, do, do you understand? Now, tell me, you who write those stories, do you have a family? Don't you take a minute and think. I've instructed our, meet, our legal team. I say, we have to remain on our knees and do what we need to do. Please sort it out. Not that I want to put up a fight, but I just want to claim the simplest dignity. That he may again walk, because, you know, with no problem. Now he can't go to house train. He has to be indoors. For him to come here, we had to send an escort. Are you hearing me? But it's supposed not to be like that. He has the right to be him and serve. But are you publish it on the first page, cover page, saying that, that this is the truth. And now there are pastors out there who do not go deep. They just read. They say, this guy, I distance myself from him. Let me tell you, if Jesus Christ was here, you would have distanced yourself from him. So I don't care. At all. Are you hearing me? So I distance myself. Now, Anneli is here. Today, we, you will begin to see some people retracting what they did. It's called humble pie. Eating it cold. Today, I thank God for the citizen who had at least the dignity of after understanding and getting correspondence from our lawyers, they have said, we will uh, print a retraction. Glory to Jesus. Now already, you can see people taking step back. I read with you. Just, just please sit down. The citizen, the citizen, uh, article, oh, we have it there. Uh, go, go to Hallelujah Ministries. There, Hallelujah Ministries. There's a big picture of me praying for somebody sick and my son being there, my son in the Lord. There it is. There it is. Hallelujah Ministries cameraman goes into hiding after being confused with Brighton Moyo. Who brought the confusion? It is you, citizen. Right. This is a retraction. Are you hearing me? After being incorrectly identified as the man in the coffin, the cameraman is said to be in hiding. Alleluia Ministries International, a resident cameraman has had to go into hiding due to receiving a barrage of threats after incorrectly being identified on social media as the man in the coffin, which the citizen reported on this week. Now, this is a good English to put it. It's to say that uh, it was on social media, which also we reported it. The citizen did wrong. Yes. Journalism cannot be peep into what you can get in the social media without verifying it. Publicize it. Do, do you understand Hallelujah Ministries? It sounds like conspiracy. The citizen in possession of the name of Alleluia Ministries International resident cameraman had, and has confirmed that he is not the same man who appeared in the coffin. The initial erroneous comparison between the two men was made by various social media, not us. 
who believed the men looked so similar that they had to be one and the same person. Then let's talk about the cell phone because the same social media said the cell phone also. We report it was a Nokia. Since being confused with the men in the coffin, the cameraman together with Pastor Aflukau have received numerous threatening messages, particularly on social media. Some of them even being xenophobic. Now, xenophobia is a diabolical spirit. Amen. And every child of God must stand away from it. You should appreciate sometimes the fact that God to bless you will take somebody miles away just for you. Amen. The citizen has been advised by the church's lawyer. Our lawyer family, our firm of lawyer is the greatest legal mind the continent has. Hallelujah. The citizen has been advised by the church lawyers that the cameraman cannot even leave his home as any appearance in the public is met with scorn, ridicule, and threats of violence. Pastor Lukau has received major backlash about the service due to, among other things, the allegation that he knew, the allegation that he knew and had worked with the men in the coffin prior to Sunday, the 24th, of things. Who created this? Is articles like this. The church lawyers have pointed out that the serious and unintended consequences as a result of the incorrect identification of this matter emphasizes the power of social media and the media, meaning citizen, in general. And I highlight the importance of responsible reporting. That's all we're asking. And speaking this way is not a fight. You don't abuse power because you have it. President Nelson Mandela say, power corrupts. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. News is power. Thank you, sir. You are safe now. They apologize. You can go. Glory to Jesus. Again, I say this is to make sure that we all understand each other. It is my responsibility. I don't want to stand in front of you and anybody is figuring, could it be? Are you hearing me? We do so many good things. That's why we are here. That's why we are in the house of God. We don't see the media coming here in the numbers out there. When we had a national police prayer, we called the media. We begged them to come. Say, please come. Let the entire country be part of this. We brought the minister of police. We brought all the generals, the commissioner, all of them here. The place was full of... We gave them a word. We say it will allow society to understand that we need to work with the law enforcement agency. Please come. They did not come. It is their right to come or not to come. They didn't come. 10,000 of us heal our land. We walked in Johannesburg, in Santon, 10 kilometers. Young and old, men and women, we walk and we will stop we lifted our hands. Lord, heal our land. Bring peace, restoration. We cried to God for our nation. Prior to that, we invited the media. The story was too good to be reported. They didn't come. For years, we've been feeding hundreds of children weekly in this church. Alexandra alone, 600. No media. Right. A 
ever reported that. No media. Because you see, it's too good. We pay school fees for children. Some have parents, some are orphans. Some in this church, some are out of this church. We pay the school fees, both in secondary school to even varsities. The story is too sweet for the media to report because you see, the media must uh, be on one side. That's, that's now. If you're a member of the media, I don't want you to look at it any other way. Look at it as a cry in our heart. You see, bad media will take in everything I'm saying here, they will take one portion. But worry not, we are live. We'll refer you to the recording. Yes! Power. Many students, media is not interested. But yet they want to be respected when they think that, that they should come. They say we want to come. They want to force themselves. How will you then be respected? respected when the relationship is one way when you call you want response and when there is no response you demand it how will you get a response when the relationship is one way in this way it is your way or the highway our church has 84 full time employees 84 people. If I put them here, this all of here. Without contractors. And sometimes we reach up to 100 contractors. And when I'm talking about employees, I'm talking about executive people who have families to take care of. Who come and park the cars. They have degrees. They come to serve. Glory to Jesus. Here. We are an organized church. And that is called employment. It means that uh, it adds to the economy. No media will report that. Why? Because if they do so, they think that the pastor out becomes bigger. And they don't want that. As if pastor Alf is here for him. I serve for God. And let me tell you, I'm not a pastor because I have, I have failed in the world. Say it, pastor. Say it out loud. I could have been far more than a CEO in our parastatos. I'm highly educated. Hallelujah. So, the, the mentality that uh, we serve God because we're trying to tap into somebody's pocket must die. Yes. It is unfair. Yes. Pastors should be beggars and this one is not a beggar. It means that uh, he's uh, manipulating people. I will never be a beggar. In the name of Jesus, never. Hallelujah Ministries International injects in the economy of Johannesburg alone every month a minimum of 20 million rain just through tourism just through tourism there are people who would have never come to see South Africa if it was not for Hallelujah Ministries Hallelujah Glory to Jesus are you here? She's saying, me, I would have never come. Look at them. Look at them there. Look at them. They're saying, we would have never come. Look at them at the back. See? Please have a seat. When they come, they use our fuel to move. Our cars to move. They use our networks. They use our water. They use our tr transportation. They use our food. They use our accommodation. Over 20 million rent minimum every four weeks injected in the economy. Where are the news that will stand and speak about it? Yes. 
Those news are not there. Last week, just for the weekend, go media, ask Tokosan, ask Capital, how much did they receive from the coffers of the church for accommodation? Over 5 million rand for a weekend. Jesus Isn't Lord. it good for the economy? Yes. There are people here who could not walk. Yes. My daughter Glory there. Come, come, Jesus. come here. You standing there. Come here. Hallelujah to Jesus. Look at her. She used to be on the wheelchair. Yes. Do, do you understand that? She was wheelchair bound. God healed her. She's still here. Amen. How many years ago again? Amen. How many years? Two years first. Two years on the wheelchair. Two years on the wheelchair. Run a little bit. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, come, come, my daughter. When Jesus. I prayed for you, and when you, you received your healing, did anybody ask you to pay a cent? No, I was not even in the church. You were watching live. I was home, seated, but ridden. Actually, even the wheelchair was not sufficient for me because I was bedridden. When I saw men of God on TV, I didn't understand because that time my Christianity was very low. I lifted my hand and I could see myself like something is happening. I stood up. I asked them to put me on the chair. I started watching TV. Jesus. I was very thin. I'm fat. You can see me. I can't even wear my uniform. I'm very fat. My now, life is changed. Now, now look at this. She, she says she's fat because she was sl very she, thin. Very, very Finished. thin. She was. Now, this. Where is the citizen to talk about this? Uh huh. If there is a media house, why don't you look for her? She's telling you her testimony. Yes. Ask her. Bed ridden. Do you hear? I that? was picked up. You know, my son used to pick me up when I go to the, to the doctor. Then, you know, my family worked very hard, but my complete my, healing my daughter, comes from here. Listen my to me. My complete healing. May I ask you? When that happened, when your healing happened, how long ago was it? How? How long ago was it that you got healed? Pastor. It was Lindes, right? It, it, it was immediately, the very same day. In Lindes. Immediately, Pastor. I, I, I just felt the other way around. Something like it's happening. Now, if we talk and about... I didn't even know the church. I didn't even... I just heard that it's Joanne. Okay, bed. she's... Okay, okay. Listen. God touched her since that moment right and she joined she could not walk she joined which department hospitality can i see someone from hospitality come come hospitality is a department that picks people their job is standing yes on stilettos <laughs> she could not walk she was bed hidden bedridden from being bedridden to joining a standing department uh, yes with high heels yes why Jesus don't you report this story isn't it Jesus worth reporting alive in AMI. now we have people here who were blind we have people one of my pastors when i met her for the first time she was she was mute she could not speak she's a pastor now she preaches the gospel when when she was brought in my house she was like, oh. she had a stroke that took us speaking away she could not speak for years right there as i saw her i looked at her i say you devil of infirmity I command you to go. Loser. Hear this. She began. Na, na, na. Th thank you. Thank you, Papa. Thank you. Thank you. Now she's a pastor. Hear this. Not only that she could speak clearly, 
Immediately, not like a today and tomorrow, no. Right there, when I'm looking, we had a conversation before she left. She went on back to school. She got a degree. The person who could not speak. After many years, she became a pastor. She takes offering. She preaches the good news and tell you, God is about to do it right now for somebody. Hallelujah. Now, don't you think that that is worth reporting? Reporting wrong only. It's unbalanced. It is ma malicious. It is irresponsible. It's heartbreaking and it is wrong. Shame. Shame. Please sit down. Whatever happened, family, on Sunday that brought a ro an uproar on one side, great praise around the world, I believe the battle is spiritual. Yes. Remember, we turned 17 and we had just finished our 40 days fasting. Yes. Yes. We had hundreds of thousands of people across the globe who joined us in fasting. Surely the devil was not pleased. I believe it is spiritual. They accused the church, they accused Pastor Alf. Thank God, not because of money laundry, not because he's a thief, not because he's a murderer, not because of rape, but because of a miracle. Your pastor may not be a perfect person, but I tell you, you won't catch me on many things. You won't catch me. I'm a law-abiding citizen to my best of abilities. I don't have shady deals. I don't indulge on things that may bring me shame today, tomorrow. No. I say again, I may not be a perfect person. But you won't catch me with uh, financial difficulties because I took money here, put it here. I don't have those things. My, 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 my tax are on point. If you go to SARS, they'll show you a certificate. If you, you, you follow me at night, <laughs> you, won't, you, you, you won't catch me on those. I try my best to serve God with honesty. And I keep on telling you. Jesus. And I keep on telling you, hallelujah, ministries. Do I try my best to do who I have to be? I don't drink. I don't smoke. Uh, I, I don't. But I tell you, even if I have a weakness, it will not be your weakness. Yeah, right. It will be my own. Are you hearing me? I keep on telling you, if you follow me because you know I don't drink, please leave me. Because the day I will drink, it will not be your mouth drinking. It will be my own. <laughs> now, if you have a problem because, oh, he thinks, it's your problem. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm preparing you to dr that I'll drink one day. No. I have never tasted alcohol in my life. I don't know how it smells. And I intend to keep it that way. But just for you to know, I don't serve God to be policed by you. Right. With you being present or absent, my relationship has nothing to do with you. It's Glory with God. To Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I go, I fly to China, I won't say, oh, they're not here. Let me now live a different life. No. The same life I live, I carry on. And I keep on telling you, hallelujah, ministers, the day I will want to drink, my first drink will be on the stage here. You, you play with me. I will drink here. 
I will open that bad bottle. I will bless it. And I will drink it. And you, if you think that my anointing comes because of the absence of that drink, maybe leave me. This is not to prepare you. This is just to say, let's trust each other. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Trust that I do the right thing and I have no reason to play cheeky cheeky behind anybody. What you see is what you get. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Now, as of this, I've received so many support. Incredible support. I am overwhelmed. People from all over. I'm talking about sons of God, daughters of God, children of God, ministers of the gospel, pastors of a great ministry from all over. Some, I did not even know that they follow. They say, Pastor Af, we're standing with you. We love you. Glory to Jesus. We love them too. So if you're watching, I mention it because I want to say thank you. And also, of course, there are people who have seen this and say, no, this is not my liking. Now, if you love me because you never heard any uh, wrong or any attack on me, uh, this is your cue. <laughs> That's right. It's okay. This is your cue. Because you see, David, when he became king in Israel, he reigned only with 400 men. And all the 400 men were with him in the cave. He did not become king and pick people he found in the city. Because you are safer with people who cried with you. Hallelujah. When you cried. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, what do we do as a church? We remain positive. We focus on God. We celebrate God for the miracle. And I can tell you just now, very soon, bigger than what happened is about to happen. Yeah! We are ready. Hallelujah, Ministries International. Are you ready? We are ready. We have entered into a season where God is about to shock the world. Right now, there is a lot of shock, but don't worry. They'll get used. They'll catch up. They'll be fine. We're not shaken. We are unfazed. We keep on doing what we do, and we are leading from the front. We are not leading from the back. Yes. Are we together? That's what we do. We focus. Second thing we need to do as a church is stand with one another. This is a time where you need your brother, you need your sister. Encourage one another. The third thing that we need to do in this moment, resist the devil. When the devil is knocking your door, he's breaking it, don't start sit, say, I leave you in the hand of God. No, kick that devil out of you. Out. There are certain things that we have to do in rectifying that. You have to do to rectify that. You need to address it. Tonight, I took time to address it, to speak to you. Are you hearing me? Some of you are edified, and if someone was on the wrong side and is watching, he may have found himself very uncomfortable. That was not my aim. I'm dealing with what I have to do, right? Amen. If you find yourself on the other side, I don't know what to say. It's not my problem. I'm doing what I have to do as a pastor of this house. So you have to resist the devil. You have to address matters. You have to tell the devil where to stop. Yes. You got to do that. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. If you just say that it's okay, keep your opinion. It's okay, keep your opinion. It becomes a problem. Someone once said that uh, the, day, the day will come when we'll remember not the insult of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Because when you're going through time, the worst you can ever have is a silent friends. They are worse than speaking enemies. That's right.
And the last thing that we'll do, and this is what we'll do even Sunday, we will pray. Amen. We will pray. pray. And if there is any other person coming in the coffin, if he's dead, I will tell you this one is dead. Stretch your hand. Let like call on Jesus. Yes. And he will say, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, come back to life. Hello. We will not shy away because this is our faith. Yes. If you don't believe our faith, it's okay. But at least respect, this is our faith. We may not go out of our way and break laws by bringing a body. If God wants us to bring a body, we'll follow the procedures. Are you hearing me? And uh, as we will follow the procedures, we'll call the talking guys to come there and witness it. And that the world will know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. They will know he did not retire. Our God has not expired. He is upon his throne. Stand up and lift your hands. And begin to pray for the church and pray for ourselves. Pray that this may turn for our good. Pray that this may turn for our good. Speak to God, family. Rakata sete ke rebekata. Zata rebekata. Continue praying. Let us pray for the church of God. The Bible says that the gates of hates, the gates of hell, shall not prevail against the church of God. Today we stand on the word of God as Hallelujah Ministries International, as sons and daughters of Alf Lukau. And we declare the word of God that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of God. Raise your voice and speak a word over the church of God. The church of God shall remain blameless until Jesus return. We shall not get tired. We shall preach the gospel. We shall defend the gospel because God has equipped us to do so. Raise your voice today. Father, in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, we gather today because of one name, the name that is above every other name. And the Bible declares that they shall come in the presence of the Lord. And by the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Under the anointing of my spiritual father, I command every knee to bow, every evil knee to bow, every evil voice to bow to the name of Jesus. Jesus shall be proclaimed. Our voices shall call upon his name. We shall not shy away from Jesus. For in him there is life, and there is life in abundance. We speak grace upon the church of God. We speak the power of God upon our men of God. Our leader, I want us to pray for one minute. For one minute, just pray for our men of God. We are not afraid when we pray, but the Bible instructs us to pray. He says that those who call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be answered. God shall hear us. Let us lift up our leader. Let us lift up our leader before the throne of grace. Father, in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus, we call upon the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Alf Lukau. Strengthen your servant, O God. He is your servant. No man called, but you called him. Lord, we come and we go back to his experience when he met Jesus face to face. And Lord, as sons and daughters of our Father, we lift him up before you, O God. 
all power, all glory, all honor belongs unto you. Now God, you who have enabled him, you, have, you who have given the ability to do miracles, for by himself he cannot do it, but to the enablement of God, he can do miracles. Amen. And the Bible has empowered him through the word of God that if he believes, if we believe, signs and wonders shall follow us. We will not shy away from miracles. I want to see more in God. Therefore, Lord, let him see more first. Then we know we will follow. Father, we tap into the same grace. The apostolic grace of our Father. The prophetic grace of our Father. Increase it, O oh God. Your word says that you will make his name great. Indeed, you alone, God, will make his name great. Lord, we protect him under the blood of Jesus. Cover his wife, our first lady, our spiritual mother, our bishop with the blood of Jesus. You are her strength, O oh God, for she is his strength, O oh God. Cover their children with the blood of Jesus. Lord, no weapon fashioned against them shall be able to prosper. Elevate him more, O oh God. Elevate him more, O oh God. Let his voice become stronger in the world, O oh God. Not just in this nation, but in nations. Let his voice rule, for that is the will of God for his life. Amen. Father, under this sound and supreme anointing, I bless your sons and your daughters. Amen. I bless your going out in the name of Jesus. I bless your coming in in the name of Jesus. You shall get home in safety and you will come back on Sunday morning with your families in numbers protected by the blood of Jesus. You will not be intimidated because you wear a MI t-shirt. You will not be intimidated because we are sons and daughters of Alf Lukau. You shall walk freely. Because this is a land that God has given us. You shall walk with your t-shirts. You shall walk with your...